maybe also like connected to this, uh, we were we were discussing at the at the start of the episode, like both the positive and the negative aspects. So, if if I can pull out one thing that I think would be kind of negative uh, regarding the the impacts on cities in this, um, if we're going to have much denser cities, right, we're going to have more people per square kilometers per square mile. Um, I would assume that there might be more like crime, there might be more stress, there might be more um, kind of some negative social interactions that would happen if we're, you know, packed like sardines in these cities a little bit more. Um, have you have you come across uh, studies or have you studied this yourself as to like a, a more dense urban area compared to one that's a little bit more, more uh, spread out? Yes, and but um... Yeah, and this, I think that all, all that research is outside of AVs and it's mm -hmm. totally interesting. And there's a lot of the work mm -hmm. that I actually have done historically. Um, and like density does not need to mean like New York City, mm. you know, uh, we'll say like an oppressive density, sure. right? Density can absolutely exist with livability. You know, tremendously dense area, you know, like most of the Netherlands is tremendously dense, right? So I think it's the densest country in, in, in terms of development in all of uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, these are like, three to five story buildings that are, you know, attached and this beautiful urban form, right? Like really walkable, really friendly, uh, um, very comfortable. I mean, people go mm -hmm. to these places for vacation because it's so right, beautiful, right. right? So it doesn't have to be oppressive uh, in the least. The important thing is then how you develop, right? So can you develop a density that also has, you know, all sorts of amenities? Do you have open space and parks? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have um, access to all your services? Is there good transportation, you know, outside of AVs, like, you know, uh, transit, uh, is, is it well served by transit? Um, you know, so all these, you know, is there structured open space, but also natural open space, including these things. So, so density does not have to be uh, an oppressive type of thing. And also, uh, at least in the United States, it's not hard to get denser than what we have, right? right like there's a, right. so much single family sprawl, right? Yeah. That, that the idea of having uh, more dense development, it can be slightly denser and it's a, it's a huge improvement. Right. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, one of the other things that kind of came up, I think that you already mentioned was like uh, the commute times, right? So if we're having, um, you know, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, was a, there was one of the terms like the word they're able to chain together, maybe on the, on the highways, uh, yeah. able to create kind of a convoy of vehicles uh, rather than being stuck in rush hour traffic, which I mean, uh, I, I used to live in Canada and I would, you know, go to Vancouver every single day from, from my, from my house. And, you know, it takes like an hour to do a, maybe a 30 minute uh, actual drive. So I think that this is one of the things that many of these autonomous vehicle uh, producers are pushing, right? That if we have mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles in these large fleets, transit times, uh, rush hour traffic, et cetera, are going to be significantly reduced as to what we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. So lots to unpack in that. Um, so one of the questions is, will commute times be reduced? And, you know, it, I, I, if, if we get to, you know, a majority of the, of the cars on the road being AVs, I think absolutely that's possible on like, you know, freeways and arterials, right? So mm. if you think about, uh, you know, going on a freeway and being able to like, you know, have the cars be much, much closer together, right. As they're going, right. um, and you don't have all the stalling that happened, you know, one of the biggest generators you you've seen this before right you're you're stuck in traffic you're stuck in traffic and you get to like the place where all of a sudden it, it loosens up and you're like there was no accident here what what right. was going on right, right? it's pretty much like people one slowing down in front of the other and like people like shifting lanes and all that so you think oh my god with, with avs you could eliminate a whole lot of that right there could be you you could really make the entire network much more efficient mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. on freeways and arterials there's still the question of how does that work in urban areas in terms of you know when I get off of the freeway, and I am, if I'm going to a more urban area, um, you know, the 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 movement within the cities might not be that much changed from what we're seeing today. And so this is one of the things, you know, early on I haven't seen it lately, but early on, uh, you know, there was a ton of engineers uh, that were putting out um, uh, studies, transportation engineers putting out studies where they're showing like, you know, AVs crossing intersections at high speeds, right? Like, you know, right, like right. being just because they can talk to each other in time and like, you know, perfect, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always said like, that's great if you live in a city that doesn't have people, right? Because if there's pedestrians, you know, they still want to cross the street. You know, when they're right, cyclists, right. they still want to move around. And so I feel like in, in dense urban areas, um, we're not going to see a tremendous amount of change. In the larger commutes, right? So like the, the, the kind of going on freeways, yeah, absolutely, you're going to see uh, mm. some, some benefits. 
and I think, and you know, this has serious implications in terms of, and to me, this is like one of the biggest negatives of AVs, potential negatives of AVs, if we're, if we're not careful, which is that the pressure it would put on sprawl, right? So if you can commute faster, right, the car's going to move faster. Uh, that's one thing. And then the second thing is if during that commute time, you no longer feel like that is a loss bit of my day, right? Oh my God, that's, that, that 40 minutes I'm in the car, like is just, you know, stress inducing and I like mm -hmm. wasted my time, right? Well, now that time, you know, I, I'm, I don't have to look at the road. I can be sleeping, working, uh, you know, uh, watching a movie, having dinner, maybe potentially doing exercise, right? All yeah. sorts of different things. Then maybe, you know, so the average commute in the US is a 26 minutes, 27 minutes, right? So maybe I'd be willing to do like 35 minutes or 40 minutes, right? Because now I'm actually, it feels like productive times or, or positive right. time. And so if you put those two things together that it can move faster, especially on freeways, and it um, and I'm less bothered by the amount of time. And I do believe that there's an upper limit to that, right? I'm not interested in being an hour and a half in the car every day, you know, in each direction. Right, right. But if those things can happen, then all of a sudden, um, maybe I'm willing to go a little further out, right? If And so if my main desires are, I would really love to have, um, you know, access to open space, or I really want to get to, you know, less expensive land, right? Which the further you go out, the more, the, the more affordable it is. Um, then there's going to be pressure to do those things. And so the pressure on expanding your metropolitan footprint will be large, will be large. And that, that has all sorts of problems, you know, as again, the background I talked about with sustainability, land consumption, uh, potentially resource consumption, not just in, you know, the, how the energy to move these vehicles, but we have to build those roads and we have to maintain yeah, those roads. Yeah. And then, you know, are we, are we, uh, how are we affecting habitat and all these, and what does this do to equity issues, right? So who has access to these things and who can live further out or not further out, how, you know, sprawl suburban development has not necessarily been a, a, a good thing for equity, right? And, um, and so this could exasperate some of those things. So it really doesn't sound like there's an easy solution to that. It's, uh, it sounds like there's many more of these conferences and discussions that have to happen, or, or am I completely wrong? Well, no, no, I, I, think, I think you're right in that there's not necessarily an easy solution. I think the solution is not technology-based. The solution mm -hmm. is you know, the things that we've been working on for years, which is like smart growth development, right? So yeah. how do we create more dense development, more like attractive, wonderful, livable, dense development? How do we get transit to be able to work more? How do we... Uh, have like, you know, better open space systems within these? How do we increase density, right? I think those things that we've been working on for a long time in, in you know, like urban development um, continue to be true. I always say like the old rules are still the new rules, right? So compact, dense, uh, mixed use, multimodal, that is still the, uh, AVs are not going to solve any of those things. In fact, they could make those things right. worse. Those are still the things we need to be doing. And then we need to put to figure out how we put AVs into the service of those things. Right, right. Okay. Okay, that's clear. The, the, I mean, the, the goal, which uh, sometimes when you talk to people who are immersed in the AV world, the goal is not to put AVs on the road, right? Like hmm. the, 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 by no means is the goal to put AVs on the road. The goal is to like have communities that we love and enjoy, right? And that I would say are sustainable and equitable at, at important to, in my world, yeah, right? Yeah. So let's figure out how we can shape that, this technology to help with that. And in the ways that it doesn't, we need to mitigate or, you know, mm -hmm. not allow. Absolutely. Yeah.